If you're not familiar with Control Compliance Suite Vulnerability Manager, it is uh, exactly that. It's a vulnerability scanner is essentially what it is, right? And what it's designed to do, it's designed to look for vulnerabilities, right? Now, it's not a traditional patch style vulnerability manager, right? This thing is looking for everything. Open ports, password policies that aren't uh, you know, set up appropriately, lockout times, uh, access to shares, so on and so forth, right? It's got you know tens of thousands of different control points that it actually operates on and looks for, right, in the environment. Some of those may actually be vulnerabilities that require a patch, right? You're actually missing you know, XYZ vulnerability, right? There's an issue with IIS or PowerShell or whatever that may be, okay? So CCSVM is a really, really cool product. Um, there's a lot of reporting available in it. You know, again, you can bring in you know, all sorts of information. Highly recommend you folks check it out. It's a, it's a really cool tool to kind of round out uh, what's going on within your environment with respect to uh, vulnerability there and generate those reports. One thing it doesn't do though is directly remediate any of those issues. Some of them it can. So in the event you're talking about something like a uh, like a password policy, for example, it has it understands Windows communication, you know, as an example, and it knows how to send a command in there to adjust, you know, group policy or something like that. So in those situations, it can do a little bit of config management on the remediation side. What it can't do though is take an Adobe patch and just magically download it and send it over there, right? It'll give you the CVEs, it'll give you some of the information about what that vulnerability is, but you have to go actually physically remediate that yourself, right? So our CCS VM customers are kind of in a situation where they've got a lot of data, but they can't really do a whole lot about it, right? Well, if you have patch management, it makes perfect sense that you'd be able to say, I have these vulnerabilities right here. If the patch database has, you know, 10 of those, then why not just go ahead and deploy them out and take care of it for me, right? And then the next time CCS VM does a scan, it can pick those up and then, uh, you know, show that they're compliant at that point, right? So I don't want to get everybody too excited. If you're a CCS VM customer, this is a super cool feature. If you're a patch customer traditionally, which most of you are in the room, this is still actually really cool to bring in that CCS VM dimensional data into this conversation and set up thresholds for auto patching and things of that nature there. So let's take a look at that one here. This one's very, very straightforward the way this behaves. It's designed to kind of really and truly be a set and forget style setup, if you will. So within the management platform, if we go to settings and we click on the control compliance suite vulnerability manager, you can see I've got the ability to connect to a CCS VM database, okay? So CCS in and of itself has a uh, the it has the ability to deploy a SQL database, which is a requirement for this particular feature there. And then each of those scan nodes that you deploy, which if you're in a large environment, you'll likely have multiples. Those scan engines will point to that database, and that's where they will dump all this vulnerability information, right? So we query that database, we bring that data back, correlate it, and that's how we set up that auto patching. Okay, so I add this information in here, you know, the connection string essentially to the, uh, to the database itself. And then I've got some options here on how uh, often I wanna bring that data in. Typically in most environments, that type of a scan happens usually once a day, you know, sometimes once a week, you know, depending on what that is. Anytime you're doing any kind of vulnerability or network scanning, you're talking about a lot of resources. That's just the way it works, right? I mean, if you're touching it and looking at it, it's gonna consume, you know, CPU. So. Uh, customers tend to kind of, you know, adjust that accordingly, right? You would definitely not want to be scanning mission critical servers every 30 seconds to look for vulnerabilities, right? They wouldn't work in that case, okay? Just kind of keep that in mind. So you've got your vulnerability check. If you're only scanning every week, then you would only set this to, you know, import that data once a week, right? And see if anything changed, okay? Once it's done, all we're really gonna do at this point is go configure a, a policy or a series of policies. That's okay, we'll leave this page. And what we are going to do here is say, out of the box, we've got four policies that are available and they're disabled by default. And they're based on high, low, medium, and info uh, from a severity point of view. And if you're familiar with those CVE numbers, CVE scores go, I think it's one through 10. And you know, one through three is info, you know, and so on and so forth, right? That's kind of how those thresholds work. So you pick those and you say, all right, anytime you run into, you being CCSVM, run into a situation where there is a high severity vulnerability that I, patch management, can fix, I want you to go ahead and remediate it, okay? And I want you to do that immediately, or tonight, or Fridays, you know, whatever that may be. And I want to override the maintenance windows because it is a big deal, or I don't, right? Totally up to you. And that applies to XYZ targets. And it really is that simple. So, depending on how you look at this, uh, if you do not want to worry about 
your lower side of the spectrum patches, right? In other words, the kind of, you know, the basic ones. They're not nasty vulnerabilities. They're probably low risk in terms of causing problems. Then I can turn on an automated policy and say, just patch these things, right? If it's a low severity, just patch it and be done with it, right? And then those higher end ones, if I get, you know, a, a CVE score of eight or a high severity, something like that, maybe I just want to be notified. Now, I kind of want to touch that myself, right? You may actually have the opposite situation in some cases where you say, if this is really and truly a high severity, you know, patch issue of vulnerability, I want you to fix it. I want you to fix it now. You know, I don't have time for this, right? But again, anytime you're doing any form of automation like that, especially when you're installing updates and things like that, there is an impact to that environment, right? So you really want to kind of take consideration uh, or take into account some consideration, you know, how this behaves and what type of impact you're running into. But the reality is that's it. That's how that integration works. So the scanner itself, like I said, is fantastic. Once that data shows up, you just turn on, you know, how we want these policies to behave and you're good to go. These out of the box, you can clone these. So if I create a new one, it'll give me the option of choosing that drop down in there. So uh, you may say, you know, uh, automatically, you know, patch, uh, you know, the finance department, right? I keep using finance there for high severity, but if you are the web servers, then I don't want you to automatically patch those. You know, I want you to wait, you know, something like that. So you have control over kind of how those dials work. Um, and that's it. The data shows up in the, uh, in the report section here. So if we crack this open, you'll see in the inter integration section, I've got control compliance suite and I've got computers, you know, vulnerability summary that's listed in here. Obviously your environment would have significantly more resources listed in here, but you'll see what the compliance rate is based on the information that was brought over from CCS VM, uh, what reported, what's applicable, you know, whether or not it's been remediated or not remediated, so on and so forth, right? So this kind of gives you an idea of what's going on there in terms of, uh, of numbers and information. And then you also have the ability to look at the actual vulnerabilities directly as well. So you can click on this, it'll say, all right, here are the different different uh, vulnerabilities themselves. If you open these up, you'll get CVE, you know, uh, uh, numbers and things of that nature there. So you can see really what's going on there. If I double click one of these, you'll see what I'm talking about. Maybe there we go. View vulnerable. So there you go. There are the individual CVEs and compliance rate and so on and so forth. Right. So, you know, again, depending on how you want to drill into that and kind of figure out what's going on there, you're good to go. So this is a form of automated patching using that CCS VM scan data. Uh, to be able to facilitate uh, that compliance, if you will. And that's what was built there, right? So, you know, again, the idea here is we're trying to tell a story. Symantec has probably one of the best security portfolios on the market. I mean, we, we touch a lot of different areas. One thing, you know, to be quite frank, we have not done a very good job is built an ecosystem for you, right? If you buy more than one Symantec product, we do a great job giving you a discount. But as Brian was saying earlier this morning, uh, Brian Barney, the sum of the parts is not always greater in some cases, right? And that's something we're trying to get to. And so from an ITMS point of view, we do an amazing job at process automation, remediation, our ability to collect and report on data second to none, right? SEP does an amazing job doing security style enforcement. DLP is amazing at pulling data back and forth and understanding data in motion, data at rest, all these different pieces there. Wouldn't it be great if they all talked to each other, right? And you could do, you know, extra things, if you will. Uh, that you couldn't normally do there. So we as a whole, and this isn't just an endpoint management slash Altiris mission statement, this is us as a company are very determined to understand our ecosystem and see where those points are and share code and share process and share load uh, so that you as customers can take advantage of all these different control points that we have and really get something better out of, uh, out of the investment that you put in place there. Okay, all right. Any other questions or anything on the CCS VM piece at all? Thoughts? Okay, well, I know we're a few minutes early there. Um, that about does it for my presentation. To learn more, visit go.symantec.com forward slash manage.